Aloha, and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And today, from the lens of Hawaii Restaurant Association, we are reviewing 2022 and providing a preview look into 2023. At this time, I'd like to have my two guests please introduce themselves. Hi, Ryan Tanaka. Hi, good morning, Cheryl. How are you? Great. Could you please introduce yourself to our mm -hmm. viewers and members? Uh, I'm Ryan Tanaka, Principal and CFO at Kai Hawaii, which is a structural engineering firm. I also run our investments, and so I focus on diversification. We have a nice uh, money market portfolio, uh, an affordable housing portfolio that I created a few years ago in partnership with the city. So we did those seven projects. Uh, last year, I acquired a commercial sewer company that I also run. And, um, and so we service sanitary sewer systems, stormwater and rain gauges, do a lot of flow metering. I also have a financial consulting company, Island Business Management that I own and operate. And then last, uh, I'm the managing partner and CEO at Giovanni Pastrami, as well as uh, CJ's and Roundtable Pizza at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Wow, Ryan, wow, <laughs> do you sleep? <laughs> Thank I you. Great, so I have a great wife and great children. That's how I can. That's how I can do it. Yes, yes. And now, Greg Maples, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I don't know if I can follow that very well. That's pretty dang impressive. I love Ryan Tanaka and and what an incredible guy he is. My name is Greg Maples. I'm the Vice President of Operations over Culinary Services at the Polynesian Cultural Center. I'm also an adjunct professor at BYU Hawaii and um, have enjoyed um, probably about five years with the uh, board of directors at the at uh, the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Um, so that's me. Thank you. So Ryan Tanaka is our current chairman of the Hawaii Restaurant Association, and Greg Maples is our past chairman of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. So if any two people know what Hawaii Restaurant Association has been doing in 2022, it's these two gentlemen. And 2022 is, was a very pinnacle year for HRA. And I looked up the definition of pinnacle, and it is the highest point of commission, right? So the highest point, and really and truly, that absolutely describes all of HRA's achievements. And at this time, as HRA moves the bar even higher, I'd like to first have our chairman, Ryan Tanaka, share with our viewers kind of what, looking back at 2022, what were some of the highlights that HRA was able to provide for the food service industry in Hawaii? Ryan? Yeah, it's been it's been a very busy 2022. Starting with, um, we we were able to uh, kick off a town hall series for our lawmakers, and and that allows us to stay close with legislators, with um, you know making sure that every session that we are not just in the forefront of of what bills are being dis being discussed, but that we really have a strong rapport with them. So we identified key candidates who are business friendly and we brought them on and, and supported them. So that was one aspect. Um, the second bucket I would consider um, are the resources to restaurants. So funding restaurant resolution fund, the um, employment tax credit, the ERC program, the uh, Hawaii business card, along with the Hawaii restaurant card, excuse me, um, and uh, along with software technology for restaurants, our job fairs to help them with staffing. And then finally would be community engagement. So it's engaging with our city, with our state, and most recently our partnership with the U.S. athletics program uh, under Brotherhood Grinds and Sisterhood Grinds. And I want everyone to know who's watching this show, Ryan was so instrumental in both the relationships with our lawmakers, the Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds really was his project that he spent numerous hours not talking about even the amount of investment that he put out for the Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds because Hawaii Restaurant Association really believes in giving back to the community. And what better way than supporting all of our youth and all of our programs here in Hawaii. So Greg, look in the rear view mirror. What was 2022 like? 
Well, you know, I just loved 2022 for so many reasons. And I, I want to first talk about that brotherhood and sisterhood grinds that Ryan um, spearheaded. You know, Ryan Tanaka only knows how to do one thing one way, and that is world class. I went to just a couple of those mini events, and they were so well done. What was so great to see is that we not only not only was a world class event, but the people that were there. I mean, we had government officials, we had business, um, you know, very important business people all together in the same room. We had people from um, University of Hawaii Athletic, not only directors and coaches, but we had players. We had all these people under one roof. I just can't tell you how exciting it was to be a part of those. And I want to give Ryan a, a real big attaboy for that, because I think that w went a real, it went really a long ways to build that relationship that I think was one of the big things that happened in 2022. And that was solidifying our relationship with our government officials. Victor Lim, who uh, is a franchisee for McDonald's. Every, if you live in Honolulu and you don't know Victor Lim, you must have just moved here. Everybody knows Victor. He's such an incredible guy. He's been on our board of directors for so long. And I, I just can't say enough good about him. I spent the other evening at the 75th um, HRA birthday anniversary with him. And I just love that man. I just love that man. And so he works so hard for us. And we continue to look at what's, you know, building those relationships. That was really big in, in 2022, getting our voice heard when it comes to legislative legislation and setting ourselves up for the legislative session in 2023, which, by the way, is going to run from January 19th through May 5th. That is a busy time for all of us. And hopefully a busy time for those who watch this show, because in today's world, we have to pay attention to what's going on in our in our legislature. Um, Ryan uh, mentioned the uh, the second round of the HRC, the Hawaii business, uh, the business holiday card that came out. Um, I think there was over seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that went into the food service industry from this card. This was huge, phenomenal, unprecedented, never done before in the history of of Hawaii never done before in the history of the the Hawaii uh, restaurant industry. And so to put $750,000, Cheryl, I want to put that attaboy on your back because you, you, you rode that horse like it was, I mean, it, yeah, you did such a great job with that. And I give you credit for that. You did such an amazing job to make sure that we, um, that we rolled that out correctly. Um, you know, we have the Restaurant Revitalization Fund and our partnership with the SBA. Those, um, we, you know, we've tried to up, up our um, relationship with them, and that's been really good. They've got such great people to work with over there, don't they? I mean, the the, the people who are doing the RRF and who, who came on, the, I think they had some of them on this show, and other people who are trying to help the people of Hawaii. They're just such incredible people. Um, let's see, what else? Um well, you um, had the free hiring event that comes to my mind. You know, the industry's struggling with employees. We're still struggling with employees. I think we'll talk about that later. Um, but we were able to partner with the uh, the HRA, uh, partnered with the American Job Center. And, um, you know, coming up on January 10th, it's a Tuesday from 9 to 1 at the Dole Cannery, by the way. There will be another free hiring event. And so mark your calendar. If you're struggling with employees, this is another really great um uh, place that you can go. And, you know, we can't ever forget our good mayor, uh, Mayor Rick Blangiardi, who I came to know, love and appreciate during the pandemic and the time that we got a chance to spend together. His um, pushing the Oahu sidewalk pilot program, um, the dining on the sidewalk, those restaurants who were able to participate that not only were able to expand their dining footprint, but which meant they were able to get more sales. It sounds like a small thing, but it's really, it's one of those 1% that makes a big difference. And we give Mayor Blangiardi a huge hats off. Um, you know, HRA also distributed over 20,000 COVID test kits. And a big mahalo goes out to Chef Zone for allowing us to use their parking lot. And to Ave Kwok, who was the project leader, who is going to be taking Ryan's place at the at, at, in, in June of next year. Abe is an incredible man. We're all so lucky to even know him. And uh, But 20,000 COVID kits were passed out. Those were passed out by actual people who volunteered to come and do it. 
And we're so grateful for that. So we've we've had so many initiatives in 2022 because we're coming out of COVID. Cheryl, you've been such a big part of of uh, HRA success. And I want to even say even more. I can if I had a dollar for every tear you shed over restaurants that were hurting, you and I would both retire millionaires. And because you care so much about it, and I want to say thank you to you. And we're in such great hands going into um, 2023 with Ryan, you. Abe and some of the others on our executive committee. So that's kind of my high level overview of 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. And another um, way that Hawaii Restaurant Association was able to keep our restaurant doors open and our restaurants in business was the employee retention credit. Ryan, you know how many people kept asking me, is can I apply for this? But I got PPP. Can I apply for this? You know, I and they there were so many questions, Ryan. And you know for a fact how many businesses we were able to convince, right, Ryan? What was our motto? Just apply. What do you have to lose? Ryan, you want to touch about the employee retention credit a little bit? It's just extra federal relief that's available. And so if you haven't already applied, please do. There was a a company that began calling our members and, and just following up with them. And I talked with them and asked how many restaurants that they've spoken with had already received it. And every single one of them did. So it reassured me that Cheryl, you know, all these efforts were not in vain, that for those who didn't receive it, they, they did receive it. But um, he was only about 15% through his list. So wow. I'm not sure where he ended up with, but hopefully, you know, for all those watching, if you have not already applied, there is money available for you um, through ERC. So please apply and, and hopefully you'll receive a number of checks. And Ryan, you know, I keep mentioning it to our, our restaurants and businesses because it's not only restaurants, but any business that was impacted by COVID, you still can apply because it's a credit, right, Ryan? You want to kind of touch about that because it's not too late, right? Yeah, um, I don't recall the, the number of years, but you still have you still have quite a while to apply. So it's a it's a credit, which means that it's for it's for um, payroll already paid back in 2020, 2021, and even into 2022. So you have the chance to, re to receive three separate payments back. And um, it's for money's already expended. You have years left to apply for it. So there's really um, no loss if you haven't already applied, and there's no. Um, you know, reduction in what you receive. So the money's sitting there, it's available. Again, please apply as fast as you can to make sure that you secure your money. And, and many times, gentlemen, you know, that's what I spend most of my day, just communicating to our restaurants and our, our um, businesses that there are other ways that you can um, be, including credits, right, on top of all the different ways that you can save money, which then helps your bottom line. And that's what Hawaii Restaurant is all about, is helping our businesses and our food service industry stay in line. Okay, so now we're going to turn around and we're going to start looking at 2023. And what does 2023 bring for our food service industry and our Hawaii restaurants? Greg, you want to take it first? What does 2023 bring? Yeah, 2023, I think, is going to bring a couple of um, couple of challenges. One is going to be um, the softening of uh, tourism, which we've already started to see. And we see projections going into the new year um, where they're going to be it's going to be soft. So, you know, how, how do we as an HRA help support that? Clearly, we we do that through continuing to promote with just what you guys talked about, the ERC program, hiring events, et cetera. Um, you know, the other thing that's going to be weighing, and it's a cloud that stays over our head constantly, and it's the legislation of our government. And it's the it's the ongoing drudgery of knowing that we're headed towards $18 an hour in minimum wage. So somewhere in 2023, we're going to start to feel the effects, the full effects of the $12, knowing that at the end of the year, we're going to take another jump um, by a dollar. And we're going to have to start really having conversations with our government officials about what, what is the right dollar amount. Clearly, $18 is not the right amount. We That is not sustainable. And it's certainly not something that, that I would support long term. 
So, you know, I think the, those are some of the things that I think we got to start looking at. The other thing is, is, and this is something I've been focused on lately, and it's really important to me, is we have to work really hard with our government officials to create a place in Hawaii where people want to stay and they want to live. We lost so many wonderful people during the pandemic that left our island and they're now situated and fixed in the mainland and we're not getting them back. And a lot of them were young. They were some of our, our children, our grandchildren that left us. And we have got to create an environment where we have affordable housing, where yes, pay is right, but it's gotta be right for everybody because you and I both know that we could easily go up to $18 an hour. It just means you're gonna pay $75 for a, a dinner out per person which is not going to do anybody any good. But we've got to work to try to create an environment on this island where our keiki will want to stay and we'll be able to have some of that tenured, skilled employees. So some of the things that are on my mind are, are those as well. Thank you, Greg. You are so right. And when we do meet with our government officials and our lawmakers, the first thing they always say is, we want to hear from your restaurateurs. We want to hear from the people that's in our community, you know, what exactly is the struggle? You know, Ryan and Greg and Victor, a, they do a great job communicating what they hear from our business community. But they, the, the lawmakers say they need to hear from the actual business owners. So we really encourage people who are in business to contact us if they want to get on our government relations committee, because it's so important. You know, you do have a voice and we do need you to support um, the Hawaii Restaurant Association. I just so, want to add to that real quick, Cheryl. I know as well as anybody, having owned many restaurants, how busy people are. But I'm telling you, and I want to speak straight to the people who are listening to this, you have to make time for this. This is not something that you cannot make time for. You have to be willing to go and testify. You have to be willing to go and send the emails, send the text, send, uh, testify, whatever it is. And we're going to help you. HRA is going to help you realize what you need to do, right? We're, Cheryl, you're going to be really good about saying, do these things. We're going to be sending things out to uh, help guide you. But I promise you, more than ever, you have to be involved or you're simply abdicating your business and your livelihood to those who don't know anything about it. That's true. That's so true, Greg. Very well said, because that's what I was trying to say. So, Ryan, let's now look at 2023 and let's just share with our viewers and members, you know, what do you see as the chairman of the Hawaii Restaurant Association happening in 2023? So let me start by um, echoing some of Greg's comments because the, the minimum wage discussion was front and center for all of us um, early this year. And I want to just set realistic expectations that we can fight against it all we want. There was no way that we could have stopped it. And there's no way that I don't really see, uh, it'd be very difficult for us to try to, to tear that back down um, because it's already been passed. And because there's now this you know, huge labor market that's looking forward to it. So while you know the restaurant owners and the employers are, are you know getting nervous, you have this contingent that's you know of Alice families and people who are struggling who are saying, wow, this is great. We can finally start to pay all of our bills. Um, what we're trying to do is, is find this middle of the road on the tip credit, where you have tipped employees who are getting paid far more than $18 far more than $20, $25. And because of the because of that $7 buffer, they can continue to make that type of money and we can still ratchet down the, the overall payroll burden through this tip credit. So what we're trying to do is just navigate through that and that's how we would soften the blow on the $18 minimum wage over time. So whether we um, really tackle it in January, in 23 or we wait one more year, it's still on our mind and we're, we have a, a brain trust that's still planning for that. And it's just a matter of um, you know, getting the lawmakers on board also and getting that we have a new uh, executive you know, group uh, with Governor Josh Green and Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Luke, just really understanding um, with, with, with the new finance chair in the house, the best way to approach that and, and work with them um, in, in the upcoming, whether it's this session or, or the following session. So 
Our community engagement remains very active. We, we will continue to work with the lawmakers. Um, in the upcoming session, we are looking at another employer credit. That's another way to soften the blow. There's other things that we can look at, whether it's um, the unemployment rate and, and trying to adjust some of those schedules and ratchet those down, or whether it's trying to um, you know find ways to create subsidies or, or other innovation in other markets that are that will indirectly benefit and then eventually directly benefit not just the employer and the restaurateur, but also the, the customer, right? Because we want to bring prices also back down. So um, the, the community engagement, I would add Brotherhood Grinds and Sisterhood Grinds. I want to thank you know Greg for coming down and, and supporting this program. It really has been profound. UH Athletics is our professional sports team and allowing us to, to come out of COVID where people were scared and confused and really create this clarion call where we can look towards the future and towards events and excitement all over again is, you know, it's, it's a huge milestone for us. Um, so that's on in one, you know, like one side. I would then turn to our market conditions, right? We we don't have any control over the Ukraine-Russian war. We don't have any control over interest rates and over the supply chain shortage and inflation. The fact that we're still at over seven percent as early as this past month tells you that it's going to be it's, it's going to take it's going to be a while. You know, we're at, the federal funds rate has come up to three point seven five percent. It's a range, but it's pretty close to that which means that interest rates are gonna to continue to climb up. And so to get back down to 2% in inflation target, who knows how, you know, how many more interest rate hikes we need to experience before we get there. So we're still, you know, everyone's watching that along with um, exchange rates, like Greg said, tourism is gonna soften because exchange rates are still very unfavorable to our international traveler. And so hopefully we'll continue to attract the domestic traveler, but um, you know, the international market is, is so large for so many of these niche, restaurants who cater to whether it's the Japanese, Chinese, you know, Korean or certain um, of our international travelers. The, so the outside um, of a restaurant is one aspect and then I'll look inside a restaurant. So in 2023, we'll be finding new ways to pivot, to adapt to changing consumer behavior, uh, whether it's online ordering, just thinking about the restaurant industry of the future and how we can provide resources to our restaurant tours to all of our members so that they can have access to to some of these um, most you know cutting edge innovative solutions that will create operational efficiency for for themselves and for all their staff and that's a great retention tool when when staff know that i think the biggest change you know we went from a labor shortage to this great resignation earlier this year to now this great retention effort where you know where employers are looking at their employees really more as people first, right? Like, you know, looking at their basic needs first and then as employees second. So what a great change and move in terms of just taking care of our employees. And that's what this is all about. So if we do that and lead by example, you know, customers are going to also treat them well. There was, there were a number of instances where employees you know, struggled because of COVID and all the different compliance requirements that were placed on them, these burdens placed on them. Um, you know, many left the industry, like Rick said, they moved completely out of, out of state. So just, just, you know, retraining people on the de-escalation management, re resetting expectations with customers, with employees, and creating that, that, that is that sense of, of camaraderie again, that, that healthy culture, that um, care culture that, that we, even at HRA, um, you know, we, 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 we take so important and we prioritize so much, um, but, so th those three things, I would say it's, you know, making sure, again, just to reiterate that we're working with the lawmakers, the community engagement, watching everything outside of a restaurant, and then trying to innovate within a restaurant. Those are the three main things for 2023 to look forward to. You know, she, Ryan said something that reminded me uh, of something, Cheryl. You know, one of the big things that um, we did in 2022 is we had the uh, Hawaii Hotel and Restaurant Show in February. And that was huge. And we have it coming up again, March 22nd, 23rd of 2023. Um, and that that is a really great place to go and talk and meet and, you know, and to get a lot of the, when Ryan said we need to focus on the inside of the restaurant, it was very profound. And a lot of times those, those shows are a place where you can go and you can see other people of the industry. You can, you know, talk to what's coming, the latest technology, et cetera, because we're going to need all of that to help us. I agree with Ryan completely. Well said. Thank you, gentlemen. Really, 
wonderful to have both of you on the show today. Thank you so much for helping us look at 2023 as a positive way. And we're looking forward to the new year. And as always, Hawaii Restaurant Association is there to support our restaurants and the food service industry. My last comment is, you know, to our members and viewers, if you're not receiving our Hawaii Restaurant Association newsletters and industry updates, it's free. Just subscribe on our website. If you have any questions regarding anything we discussed today or anything in the food service industry, reach out to me at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. And again, Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time and being part of the discussion today. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. holidays. Thank you. Happy, Happy holidays. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.